The pandemic certainly had a massive impact on the business. Through the pandemic, we're looking at lots of different grants. After COVID, there was a lot of things that we needed to change. Je dirais à la fois d'être dans un accompagnement très personnalisé sur soi. Doing the online training courses, even though they're simple and easy, they give you massive amounts of information. The access to apprenticeship grant is pretty much a lifeline. Seacare COVID Channel Area Response Exchange is an Interreg France Channel England project which is delivering a 6.7 million euro package of COVID-19 recovery support to businesses and individuals at risk of exclusion on both sides of the channel. The improvement that we've been able to make has enabled us to become more sustainably aware, more waste efficient. This multi-strand project is helping the seven partner organisations to review good practice from and build on lessons learnt to shape and implement response and recovery actions to help alleviate the impact of the pandemic. We've had quite a few inquiries for this year already because of the Seacare voucher, because of the help we've had from KCC. Seacare includes support for individuals such as skills training, apprenticeships and digital inclusion. There is help for businesses via advice, vouchers and grants to help sectors hard hit by the pandemic to develop new business models to respond to market changes and ensure a green, inclusive and sustainable economic recovery. Seacare is also developing blueprints for the future use of town centres to improve long-term prospects for businesses and work on new ways to tackle social exclusion. The application for this CKR voucher was incredibly easy. The team at Apprenticeships Norfolk have been really supportive. Oh, it's been brilliant. Like, it's, it's just let our daily way of working become so much easier. It's certainly made a difference to our business. If a small charity like us can afford to have an apprentice, then I feel like anyone can afford to do it. Everyone within the team was very helpful from uh, the sea care team as well as the procurement team, which was external, was fantastic. Really easy process. I mean, I think it was a one pager and I think I filled it out and, and actually then the, the provider did the rest. So it was a really easy process for us. I'd like to personally thank KCC. Any help for small businesses like ours would be more than welcome. It certainly helped me and a lot of other people as well. Hi, I'm Guillaume. I'm the Seacare Project Officer for uh, Kent County Council. So what Seacare uh, is, so the letters stand for COVID Channel Area Response Exchange and was developed during COVID to help SMEs and individuals to bounce back from the impact of the pandemic and therefore tackle socio-economic challenges faced. At KCC, we've been uh, focusing our efforts on businesses, on SMEs. Indeed, we've uh, launched uh, two voucher schemes, one around uh, technology resilience and another one around uh, sustainability. But we've also boosted uh, customer confidence by training businesses uh, mainly from the home uh, improvement sector. So first, let's talk about the technology resilience uh, voucher scheme. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, there was a need to take many activities online. While some companies had all the tools and had already uh, click and collect options uh, ready, uh, some other SMEs, they were left behind. So the, the aim of the scheme was to uh, help local firms uh, to become digitally resilient and above all uh, ready uh, in case of another lockdown or another pandemic. Um, and the successful SMEs uh, were able to spend a voucher of uh, up to a thousand pounds. We've received huge interest so the scheme was really needed by the Kentish SMEs. Uh, with the money allocated, we've been able to help more than 460 SMEs. These businesses have benefited from uh, IT equipment, digital marketing support uh, and website enhancements. 
So we've received more interest than uh, the funding uh, available. Uh, thus, we would uh, obviously recommend to running this scheme again. We were quite surprised, in fact, to realize that some uh, SMEs, some companies, didn't have good ICT equipment and also that some business owners didn't have uh, a proper laptop to use solely for uh, business and sometimes they had to share uh, a laptop with a relative. Some SMEs wanted to build a website uh, with the voucher and with hindsight, a thousand pounds uh, was a bit low for some of the digital projects. Perhaps increasing the value of the, the voucher uh, would have been even more helpful for uh, these uh, SMEs. The second scheme was the Green Recovery Voucher Scheme. Uh, the pandemic uh, ruined good practices businesses had started to implement around uh, sustainability. Businesses had to modify the way they worked to comply with COVID guidelines, such as moving to single-use and uh, disposable items, also increased ventilation. Uh, the aim of the Green Recovery uh, Voucher Scheme uh, was to help uh, local firms uh, restore a green heart uh, to their operations. The successful SMEs were able to uh, spend um, a voucher of up to uh, £1,500 uh, with one of a range of approved uh, providers. So with the money allocated for this scheme, uh, we've been able to help uh, 100 uh, SMEs with a range of waste, energy efficiency interventions, sustainable transport, net zero transition planning uh, and biodiversity uh, solutions. Many of these have gone uh, on to implement further improvements uh, in sustainability and decarbonisation activity as a result of it. Uh, both uh, voucher schemes uh, came just at the right time uh, to support a wide range of small businesses in Kent and also at a time when they were facing uh, many challenges. We are very grateful to the Interact programme for enabling us to allocate vouchers to help so many local companies. Hi, I'm Adam Mortimer. I'm the KCC Trading Standards Check Scheme Manager. As part of the Interreg Seacare project, we were tasked with building consumer confidence by providing businesses within Kent key information about COVID-19. We conducted some um, market research uh, and we found quite quickly that um, residents in the area were still very concerned about COVID-19, even though the guidelines had been relaxed. We started off uh, by producing a series of podcasts which uh, focused on COVID-19, but also on some other areas, which gave us a, a real uh, opportunity to get some key best practice guidelines to our, our member businesses and other businesses in Kent, COVID-19, consumer rights, consumer vulnerability and building confidence with best practice guidelines. As part of these resources we produced, we also provided infographics, we provided booklets, as well as short videos. So we've had many businesses that have taken part in, uh, in listening to our resources, reading about them, viewing them in all the different uh, ways that we have uh, provided it to them. A few businesses have taken part in our additional e-learning and achieved a uh, certification and an additional badge on their membership profile. The podcasts we've produced have been a great success, uh, with over a thousand people listening to the five episodes that we've produced. These episodes have uh, featured national and local experts in all the fields that we've covered. It would be great to continue doing more things like this and, and really giving our residents, giving our businesses and our members with Trading Standards Checked key information at key points during the year about what will help them with their businesses or what will give them more confidence with businesses coming into their homes. So one key success uh, that we've seen already is the, the legacy of the resources that we have 
um, for our members. The resources that we have will last for many years to come. They are key best practice guidelines that any business, whether they're entering into your home or those that are in a shop front, can use to further build the confidence of, of consumers in Kent as we move out of the pandemic uh, into a, a safer world. Je suis Elodie Pilon, enseignant chercheur en management stratégique de l'innovation au laboratoire Linéact de Saisy Campus Rouen. Donc Saisy est un centre de formation et d'enseignement professionnel dans trois secteurs d'activité qui sont le numérique, l'industrie et le BTP. Saisy est engagé dans la recherche grâce à son laboratoire Linéact sur lequel en fait, on va travailler sur les mutations technologiques dans l'industrie et le BTP. Il faut savoir qu'en Normandie, les principaux employeurs sont les petites et les moyennes entreprises et que ces entités elles doivent s'adapter aux évolutions de leur environnement. Mais généralement, en raison de leurs ressources limitées et d'une expertise qui peut parfois être limitée, elles peuvent avoir des difficultés à évoluer. Et dans le cadre de nos travaux de recherche, nous cherchons principalement à comprendre comment ces évolutions peuvent impacter les entreprises et comment est-ce qu'on peut mieux les accompagner. Durant la crise Covid, forcément, les PME ont été très touchées, notamment du point de vue financier. Et donc, ça a été pour nous aussi l'occasion d'identifier quels, quels sont les leviers qui permettent de mieux les accompagner. Dans le cadre de ces CARE, nous cherchons à proposer en fait une boîte à outils qui va permettre aux PME de faire preuve de résilience face aux urgences et aux défis qui sont posés par une situation de crise. Et donc cette boîte, elle va inclure une évaluation d'abord euh, de la résilience de l'entreprise, donc quels sont ses points forts et ses points faibles. Ça va ensuite permettre de proposer des recommandations pour qu'elles puissent adapter leur business model pour un avenir euh, plus solide. Dans le cadre de ces CARE, en fait, nous avons d'abord identifié quelles étaient les aides qui avaient été apportées par la, la région Normandie. Ensuite, on a identifié également quels étaient les problèmes euh, rencontrés par euh, ces PME et puis nous avons réalisé toute une série d'interviews qui nous a permis de comprendre comment est-ce que les PME ont fait face à la crise Covid et comment est-ce qu'elles ont réussi à adapter leur activité quand ça a été le cas. Les travaux menés dans le cadre de ces CAP nous ont permis de comprendre que la résilience n'était pas un état, mais est un processus constitué de trois étapes. La première étape, c'est euh, la mise en place de mesures rapides sans forcément changer le mode d'organisation. L'entreprise en fait ne va pas changer fondamentalement et est susceptible de réduire ses activités. Dans une deuxième phase, elle va chercher à ramener son niveau d'activité à la normale en mettant euh, en place des procédures et quelques changements organisationnels. Et enfin, c'est seulement après qu'elle va procéder à un renouvellement stratégique. Et donc les interviews menées dans le cadre de ces CAIR auprès des PME ont permis de mettre en avant que les entreprises ont fait évoluer leur business model au travers deux approches principales. La première, c'est par l'extension des canaux de distribution. C'est-à-dire que les canaux de vente habituels devenant inaccessibles, les entreprises ont dû trouver d'autres méthodes, d'autres canaux de distribution pour essayer de développer euh, leur vente, notamment par Internet. Et donc là, la transition euh, du numérique a joué un rôle prépondérant. La deuxième façon de faire, ça a été la proposition euh, de nouvelles offres puisque durant la crise Covid, les habitudes des consommateurs ayant changé, les besoins des marchés ont également évolué. Et donc les entreprises ont dû identifier justement tous ces changements pour pouvoir s'adapter et proposer soit euh, de nouvelles offres de produits ou de services ou de nouveaux moyens de vente. En conclusion, CECAR nous a permis de mieux identifier les problèmes auxquels sont confrontés les PME et euh, les leviers pour y faire face. I'm Ellie, I'm from the Inclusive Economy team in Plymouth City Council. Plymouth is a city located on the southwest of England. It's currently with a population of approximately 264,000 people and it's known as Britain's Ocean City, attracting thousands of visitors each year. 
Plymouth has a young population with low pay, low skill economy. The city is identified within the 20% of most deprived local authority districts in England. Our team focuses on people and the workforce, thinking about their behaviours and motivations. We recognise that by enabling people to be more productive, this will ensure that our businesses in turn are more productive. From March 2020, COVID started to affect every area for every person in Plymouth. We came out of the COVID emergency recognising three key areas that disproportionately affected our workforce. Those with caring responsibilities and health limitations significantly impacted the way people were able to work. A high proportion of our workforce was face-to-face -face and low-pay sectors that directly impacted or significantly changed because of the emergency, such as retail, health, care, childcare and hospitality. And finally, our city centre needed reinvigorating. At the start of COVID pandemic, the town centre was mainly retail and office space. With a grant of 1.1 million euros apportioned to us, delivery was around the following projects. Future work skills. The identified need was to enable community outreach services to engage and refer to individuals to develop skills action plans that would equip them for future work opportunities within our city. Individual skills action plans were delivered through a target of 20 outreach services aiming to target 200 individuals. Even though we had an initial target of 20 community organisations, the take-up proved to be really popular. And after a quick rollout, we found that 36 organisations across the city engaged. As a result, we were able to form a Skills in the Community Working Group, where we shared our ideas and best practices with others across the city. It was through these organisations that we've been able to engage with over 200 individuals with those skills action plans that enabled us to understand who is looking to reskill, what is motivating and the best ways we could support them. Consultation with our business networks through our labour market information identified that the key sectors for immediate attention were construction, care and manufacturing. Our next strand was sustainable business recovery. This strand of the project implemented a programme for inclusive growth for Plymouth. It was designed to build on the emergency lessons to enable local businesses and organisations to understand and implement new practices that would make the city's economy more resilient. Businesses would be provided with new learning tools to adapt new ways of working. In addition, five new business support programmes were piloted, supply chains, skills and workforce engagement, employment practices, high street renaissance and climate emergency. Initially, working with 10 businesses for each theme, we would then roll out to a further 150 businesses. The rollout was achieved by expanding the Plymouth Supplier Directory, developing the employer hub within Skills Launchpad Plymouth and understanding and planning the business environment by recognising that the workforce motivations have changed towards more flexible working requirements, as well as thinking about environmental action. This package was achieved by launching the Plymouth Charter, a business network that has engaged with over 300 local businesses committed to a fairer, greener economy for Plymouth. The Charter covers the five work streams with partners and networks for each. Through regular co-design groups in each work stream, we have listened to and understood the challenges of creating an inclusive economy. We have mainly focused on workforce issues. This activity within this strand aimed to create a blueprint for the city centre and suburban high streets by procuring an external partner. The activity aimed to investigate the high street culture and opportunities to use vacant jobs within the city centre. The Meanwhile Use programme focused on the cultural offer of the city centre and bringing people together again within the city centre. The Plymouth Charter has grown to 285 signatories over 2022. During 2022, the Plymouth Charter, in collaboration with Skills Launchpad Plymouth, 
Real Ideas Organisation and Plymouth Culture, we've hosted over 120 events with businesses. The Plymouth Charter has engaged with 210 businesses in Plymouth and we are growing and developing our business and community support and delivery, so this number will undoubtedly grow. The Charter is a framework for the future. We have also worked with Plymouth Culture to support imaginative projects that occupy vacant spaces in the city centre through a meanwhile use model. Fifteen projects have been supported with a meanwhile use space and grant across seven premises across Plymouth City Centre. We have had a real focus on people. Through the Employer Hub, we've worked with businesses to understand recruitment and people development. Through the Plymouth Charter, we have recognised that the workforce motivations have changed towards more flexible working requirements and environmentally responsible businesses. The Charter recognises that employment practices, priority skills and economic growth are all different. We are aiming to address the challenges of commercial property ownership, switching from investors to community ownership, so creating spaces that bring people together that strengthens the communities. Moving forward, we have several planned interventions. We would like to increase the proportion of companies offering flexible working across their pay scales and occupation to remove barriers for people with caring responsibilities and health challenges within Plymouth companies, especially those where diversity and flexible working are less common. We would like to widen the social mobility programmes. We would like to explore what could work for diversity business networking, thinking about where everyone is so different that no one is a minority. Finally, we'd like to explore what works for creating graduate level jobs in Plymouth and how we can support more diverse people with career development. The team at Apprenticeships Norfolk have been really supportive. The access to apprenticeship grant is pretty much a lifeline in terms of helping a business. So I would urge other businesses to take advantage of the access to apprenticeships grant. Available to fund a huge range of equipment, it's certainly made a difference to our business and it's certainly made a difference to our apprentice. Hi, I'm Joe Ballard. I'm the External Funding Manager for Norfolk County Council. Sea Care for us takes two different sides. So we have a side looking at apprenticeships and we have a side uh, looking at supporting business. Sea Care was all about COVID recovery and in these two areas, we identified a number of things uh, that we could change. So the apprenticeship strand led by Apprenticeships Norfolk facilitates the route into apprenticeships for young people by helping them buy the equipment they need to start work in a specialist trade and have access to computer equipment to enable them to do online training, but also travel. With evidence building to show that there was a need to tackle social mobility, it was clear that there was a gap where financial support was needed towards the cost of tools and travel within Norfolk. Access to apprenticeships, or A2A, was an idea detailed around the understanding of young people seeking apprenticeships and the financial barriers they face when apprentice wage could be as low as £4.30 an hour when the project launched whilst trying to access their chosen careers, especially at a time when opportunities for young people are limited and highly competitive because of the pandemic. It also builds on needs identified in businesses which can prevent them taking on young people. Access to apprenticeships was warmly welcomed at a time when the government incentive of £3,000 was no longer available after January 2022 for employers who recruited a new apprentice. Seacare has allowed Apprenticeships Norfolk to develop and provide offerings to SMEs who employed a new apprentice between the ages of 16 and 24 to assist at a crucial point in a cost of living crisis and helping contribute towards tools, travel and digital equipment. Access to apprenticeships has tackled social mobility. By apprentices having access to their own tools and equipment, it gives both the apprentice and employer support and contributes towards a robust way of developing knowledge, skills and behaviours for the apprentice and a quicker and more confident turnaround from apprentice to experienced employee. All six districts within Norfolk have had 28 or more applications, with Kingsland and West Norfolk topping out at 67 so far. In addition, Applications have covered all 15 apprenticeship sectors with construction and engineering sitting at the top. We expected this after numerous conversations with employers who expressed the difference it will make to learning, the apprentice and the business when an apprentice does not have to wait around to borrow other employees' tools. 
Overall, Apprenticeships Norfolk have been able to support 375 individuals with around 500 grants given out as part of the programme. COVID-19 restrictions left many businesses facing new digital challenges. The Go Digital scheme is a free business support programme designed to help businesses do more with digital. Micro, small or medium-sized businesses can use the scheme to help make better use of digital technology through funding and one-to-one -one support. The Go Digital project is delivered by Norfolk County Council through both Sea Care and local authority funding. It provides expert one-to-one -one consultancy for nine hours and the ability to apply for grants of up to £500 following that period. 600 businesses have been supported by Go Digital directly through the Interreg EU-funded Sea Care project, gaining knowledge and actions towards becoming more digital. 500 of these businesses have gone on to spend their grant voucher on furthering the digital capabilities of their business and purchasing hardware, software, digital marketing, website builds and much, much more. Go Digital has been a huge success. The project was full only five months into the Sea Care project, with further applications continuing onto a waiting list throughout the year. Throughout the project, we have received overwhelmingly good feedback on just how well the scheme has supported businesses. Due to the excellent feedback, further funding has been secured from local districts and the project is continuing on after Sea Care using the same formula that's been so successful. The success of the project has been in allowing us to develop the pilot schemes that we ran previously into something that is now causing a significant effect on the Norfolk economy. J'avoue que moi j'ai été très, très agréablement surprise de, de voir ce genre de dispositif. Ça, ça a permis de, je dirais à la fois d'être dans un accompagnement très personnalisé sur soi, La période du Covid a été particulièrement marquante pour le secteur du tourisme, comme vous le savez. Les confinements ont vraiment ralenti très fortement l'activité touristique. En France, on estime une perte à hauteur d'environ 70 à 80 du chiffre d'affaires en 2020 sur le secteur du tourisme. Ça représente environ 60 milliards d'euros. Euh, donc ces pertes sont colossales. Euh, en Pas-de-Calais, forcément, l'impact a été le même et les professionnels du tourisme ont énormément souffert de cette période. Le projet SICAR a été une réelle opportunité pour nous euh, pour accompagner le secteur du tourisme dans sa transition, euh, dans sa relance après la période du Covid. Euh, ce projet nous a permis plusieurs actions. Euh, tout d'abord, il nous a permis de soutenir le secteur du tourisme, les professionnels du tourisme, grâce à des formations. Nous avons euh, formé les entreprises du tourisme au, au tourisme durable. En effet, avec les confinements, avec le Covid, les visiteurs ont changé leur mode de consommation et sont devenus de plus en plus exigeants sur un tourisme plus durable, plus respectueux dans l'environnement. Pour répondre à ce nouveau défi, nous avons donc créé les Académies du tourisme durable pour les professionnels du tourisme. Ces académies ont permis de mettre en place des plans d'action dans les entreprises touristiques du Pas-de-Calais. Ces plans d'action doivent aider les entreprises à réduire leur impact éco-environnemental. Aujourd'hui, ce sont plus de 70 entreprises qui ont été formées aux académies du tourisme durable et qui déploient leur plan d'action correctif pour répondre aux nouveaux enjeux éco-environnementaux. Nous avons également accompagné certaines entreprises dans le repositionnement de leur activité touristique. Euh, avec les confinements, certains entrepreneurs ont été un peu euh, désœuvrés, se sont sentis euh, inutiles, ont parfois euh, voilà, repensé à comment redévelopper leur activité touristique. Euh, ça a été très compliqué pour eux. Donc, ce programme d'accompagnement avait pour vocation d'abord de leur euh, redonner confiance, euh, parce qu'il y avait une vraie perte de confiance avec la période du Covid pour certains entrepreneurs 
Et puis, une fois cette, cette confiance retrouvée, le programme devait les aider à repenser leur offre touristique en fonction de l'évolution de, de la demande des visiteurs. Nous avons accompagné euh, 13 entreprises de façon, de façon très, très personnalisée. C'est vraiment de l'accompagnement sur mesure. Cet, accompa cet accompagnement avait à la fois des sessions collectives qui permettaient à chacun, aux entreprises de se rencontrer, d'échanger entre elles. Et puis, il y avait des temps individuels où là, on abordait vraiment les business models des entreprises, où on travaillait avec eux sur leurs difficultés, qu'elles soient psychologiques, économiques, liées à des ressources humaines, toutes sortes de difficultés. Enfin, euh, nous avons mis en place un troisième accompagnement qui touche plus particulièrement le secteur de l'hospitalité, l'hôtellerie et la restauration. Euh, à l'issue du premier confinement, plus de 150 000 salariés avaient quitté le secteur de l'hospitalité en France. En deux, à l'été 2022, il manquait encore 1 500 salariés et collaborateurs dans les entreprises de l'hospitalité en Pas-de-Calais. Donc face à ce manque cruel, euh, nous avons décidé de mettre en place un cursus qui visait à sensibiliser les personnes éloignées de l'emploi au métier du secteur de l'hospitalité. Il faut savoir qu'en Pas-de-Calais, il existe de, à, depuis plusieurs années un programme qui s'appelle les Brigades Solidaires. Ce programme a vocation à former les personnes sans emploi au métier du HCR. Cela dit, euh, force est de constater que le taux de, de réussite de ce programme est relativement faible parce que les personnes ne connaissent pas forcément les contraintes du métier. L'objectif de l'accompagnement que nous avons mis en place dans le cadre du projet SICAR était de sensibiliser les personnes en recherche d'emploi au métier du secteur de l'hospitalité. Alors comment on les sensibiliser On les aurait fait rencontrer des chefs d'entreprise, des salariés, on les a mis en situation dans des hôtels, dans des restaurants, pour qu'ils appréhendent toutes les dimensions des métiers du secteur de l'hospitalité. À ce jour, nous avons formé plus de 70 personnes euh, et nous espérons encore en former plus d'une cinquantaine jusqu'à la fin du programme. Euh, et nous espérons maintenant que ces personnes vont rentrer dans un cursus qui leur permettra de travailler dans les secteurs de l'hospitalité. Grâce au projet SICAR, nous avons développé une campagne de marketing post-Covid euh, pour sensibiliser les visiteurs aux nouvelles offres développées par le projet SICAR. En effet, nous avons créé 16 vidéos euh, qui valorisent les nouvelles offres de produits touristiques développées par les entreprises que nous avons suivies. Ces vidéos ont été promues euh, grâce à une campagne d'affichage sur 135 points en Angleterre, mais aussi grâce à une campagne numérique. Cette campagne marketing a pour objectif principal de faire revenir la clientèle britannique. Donc nous espérons que cette campagne de communication va redonner envie à la clientèle britannique de revenir dans le paquet. Julie West from the New Anglia Local Enterprise Partnership, part of the programs team. We're one of 38 in the country and one of our biggest purposes is to support business and business development, hence getting involved in this sea care project. We are involved in two strands of the project. We're looking at self-employment and also the Town Challenge Fund strands. For the self-employment um, part of this programme, we, we were aiming to reach to people who perhaps during COVID were furloughed, maybe they lost their jobs, they've moved away and been made redundant. There was a whole host of reasons, but we thought we could offer a really good package of support to get them back on and so either self-employed or starting a new business. So far, we've got over 450 people have been through the programme and we've created 150 new businesses with them. 
If someone was thinking of um, starting a new business, then we would be looking at offering them um, planning at new business, doing market research, giving them one-to-one -one support. They could go to workshops. A lot of the work's been carried out online with them, so they've been joining Zoom calls, Teams, or even going to networking events. There's accommodation available so they can hot desk as well and, and get involved with other small businesses, which which helps them on their way. The other area of work that we've been involved in is um, trying to re-energise some of our town centres. We've been looking to rejoin the community with the businesses to look at perhaps repurposing areas, trying to get a nice vibe with coffee shop culture, with um, lots of events happening in the high street. So we, we tended for four different town centres uh, and those are happening two in Norfolk, two in Suffolk. They will be um, reports coming out of the work, so it was very much about market research, talking to the local people, finding out what it is they wanted, and then from there, the towns will be informed on what's wanted and they'll be able to spend their money. We've got places like Stowe Market, who have got a very long corridor high street, and we just want to try and um, bring some new businesses into the middle part of the town to join up the town. In Framlingham we've been looking with young people and trying to get young people more involved in the town centre as well. With our um, self-employment programme we've actually um, engaged over 700 people and all of those people will have been come on, they will have been interviewed, spoken to and perhaps they decided, some of them, it's not for them, they're going to go back into employment. We've also got a number of businesses started, so there's nearly 150 of those, and, and each of those will be going out. Some of them will be employing more people, so there's an opportunity there to, to swell the numbers. Um, actually, we've had 37 people go back into jobs, properly into jobs, rather than taking the self-employment route. And each person that has been on the programme has had over 11 hours of support, so that's been 4,300 hours of support that's been delivered. I would say some of the lessons that we've learned is we've actually taken on um, a seamless process now. So it's seamless and it's paperless. So everything goes onto a CRM system and it's enabled us to keep account of what's going on with the programme and delivery. Je suis Enora Morin du Conseil départemental du Finistère. Dans le cadre du programme SICARE, le département agit dans deux domaines différents. Le premier pour le développement économique de ses auto-entrepreneurs les plus précaires et également pour la précarité numérique pour offrir des aides innovantes pour combattre cette problématique. Donc euh, la première action du département, c'est d'offrir un accompagnement à ces auto-entrepreneurs qui sont bénéficiaires du RSA. Cet accompagnement dure entre 6 mois et 1 an et il a pour but d'aider les autres entrepreneurs à sortir de cette situation non viable sur la durée. Donc il y a trois types d'accompagnement qui sont proposés. Euh, tout d'abord, il y a un accompagnant pour l'aide à la clôture de l'entreprise si on réalise que l'entreprise n'est pas viable. Il y a également une aide pour chercher une autre formation professionnelle si on réalise que l'entreprise ne va pas marcher. Et également une aide pour euh, s'améliorer, avoir plus de compétences pour continuer à développer son entreprise. Donc pendant ces six mois à un an, euh, il y a des séminaires et des ateliers qui sont proposés aux auto-entrepreneurs. Et donc euh, pour l'instant, nous avons 173 personnes accompagnées dans le département du Finistère et on espère atteindre 200 personnes d'ici la fin du mois de mars. La première chose qui ressort de cet accompagnement, c'est tout d'abord l'aspect social. Puisque grâce à un accompagnement qui va d'une durée d'un an avec un conseiller et l'auto-entrepreneur qui se rencontrent une fois par mois, l'auto-entrepreneur sort de son sentiment de solitude. Il peut même échanger avec des pairs au cours des ateliers et des séminaires qui sont proposés. Et la deuxième chose qui ressort, c'est bien sûr l'aide au développement économique, puisque grâce au conseiller, l'auto-entrepreneur a un regard extérieur sur ce qu'il fait. Et donc on sort d'un projet professionnel statique en suspens et comme ça on va voir vers où c'est plus intéressant de se diriger plutôt que de rester dans la même situation sur la durée. Pour la deuxième activité, le département du Finistère était impliqué dans la lutte contre la précarité numérique. Ça veut dire qu'en 
2022, le département du Finistère a lancé un appel à projet auprès des collectivités et des associations finistériennes pour qu'elles proposent des idées innovantes pour lutter contre la précarité numérique. Au total, ce sont 14 associations et collectivités qui ont été sélectionnées. De septembre 2022 jusqu'à mars 2023 ont eu lieu et auront donc lieu des activités liées au numérique. Sur le territoire du Finistère, c'était des ateliers ouverts au grand public, donc des journées numériques, où on a pu par exemple apprendre à faire du motion design, utiliser des imprimantes 3D, et aussi des ateliers plus classiques comme l'aide la, la, aux démarches administratives qui sont maintenant dématérialisées. Au total, ce sont 100 personnes qui doivent être touchées à travers le Finistère. Et ce qui est ressorti vraiment de cette action, c'est qu'il y a un grand intérêt pour lutter contre cette problématique dans le Finistère, puisqu'on a eu un grand nombre de candidatures. Et donc à la suite de SICARE, ça veut dire que le département du Finistère va encore plus s'investir pour travailler sur cette thématique. Merci pour votre écoute. SICARE has been a project which has reached thousands of individuals and businesses with support which has attempted to address societal and economic challenges which have existed for decades but were exasperated by the COVID-19 pandemic. As evaluators, this has been a fascinating journey for us. It started by assessing the COVID response across partner regions and making recommendations around how support could be designed to continue the recovery. Our answer to that was innovation and some of the key principles which underline it, focusing on need, fostering collaboration, human-centered design and measuring impact. We saw teams rapidly testing interventions, gathering feedback, adapting delivery and going again. When people's backs were against the wall, normal supply side rules went out the window and it was incredible to see what was achieved. Then we moved on to evaluating the C-Care programs. We designed a toolkit to help partners apply innovation in project design and a methodology to me measure impact. Because when it comes down to it, impact is everything. It's an achievement for interventions to reach thousands, but the power is in the change that happens as a result of that intervention. There have been some amazing stories from people and businesses, and you'll have seen many of these in the case studies that have been created. We've also seen over 200 skills action plans in Plymouth, the creation of a sustainable tourism academy in Pas de Calais, 14 programmes across Finisterre, fighting against digital poverty, and 144 new businesses started in Norfolk. Social interventions have battled digital poverty, upskilled individuals, supported self-employment and unlocked apprenticeships. Business interventions have awarded over £1 million of vouchers to tackle technology barriers and support sustainability. Toolkits were created and navigated, and traders benefited from new ways of accessing advice. There have been some really practical lessons learned. If you're supporting people, social mobility affects everything. The hard to reach are hard to reach. So be creative with how you engage and deliver support. Capturing management information via suitable solutions such as Power BI genuinely helps you monitor delivery and stay agile. The strive for work-life balance exists for everyone. If you're supporting businesses, procurement frameworks sound like a good idea and they have their benefits, but they can be difficult and self-limiting. Consider if there are better ways. The vouchers really work. It shifts the cash flow burden to the supplier and it's a great way to light a fire inside the company. Whether it was people or business, the impact we measured was really positive and the results in the report show high levels of satisfaction and a genuine change in behaviour. With social, we've recorded an increase in confidence in participants, something which is genuinely critical in changing their circumstances. And in business, there was great evidence that support has made companies more resilient and would help them recover quicker in the future. We spoke to all partners to find out what they were trying to achieve with their intervention so we could design a survey which measured how successful they've been. I just want to go through some of the key project headlines. We'll start with people. With self-employment in Finisterre, 70% felt the support would help them start their own business. And with self-employment in Norfolk, we saw 144 people start their own business. Upskill in Plymouth, 95% felt they gained skills and knowledge which would help them with future roles. Apprenticeships in Norfolk has unlocked 373 apprenticeships to date. 96% of individuals and 93% of businesses said the support from a to a was important in unlocking those opportunities. Hospitality training in Pas de Calais was delivered to 70 individuals who valued the chance to reflect on the challenge facing the industry. On to business. With customer confidence, 94% of traders 
felt support helped them improve their service delivery. With Go Digital, 91% implemented or are working towards implementing new digital working. With Technology Resilient, 97% felt support helped them become more technologically resilient. With Inclusive Economic Growth, 80% felt support had helped them recover from the pandemic and the same amount felt that recovery was now sustainable. And there is even more evidence of positive impacts across the projects in the evaluation report. As we move towards the next cycle of funding, we may see limited resources in key areas. How we spend that resource will be crucial. How can we generate the biggest return on investment? What has the biggest impact on people, place and the economy? We would always continue to bang the drum for innovation, for leadership teams to take more risks and empower their people to come up with creative ways to deliver support and do things differently. Learn and adapt. Focus on impact and keep tackling the most challenging issues.